this line of work, you gotta know your characters. You have to know them better than they know themselves. You have to know where they hang, who they hang with, what they know, what they don't. Because if you don't know your characters, you're gonna end up in a gutter. And this city don't care much for the gutters. This is a video about how to develop deeper, more compelling, more interesting characters in your story. Exercise number one is to ask, what are your characters doing behind the scenes? Quite often we just think about our characters in the context of our story. So if we have a character that is about a soldier fighting in a war in this fantasy world, then often we just think about how they're operating in that war, who their friends are within the army, how they think of the enemy, what their role is in their sort of squadron. But sometimes we neglect to ask ourselves questions about what would they be doing if they weren't at this war? What does like a typical Tuesday look like for them? What do they enjoy doing to wind down? What do they do that gets them excited back home? Where are the places that they love to visit? Do they have family back home? Do they have friends back home? And asking all these different questions about stuff that's happening not inside the world of your story, but rather just before your story begins and also after your story ends as well potentially, can be a really useful way to better understand your characters. I remember a few years ago reading Character by Robert McKee and one of the exercises he discusses in this book is to almost imagine yourself as like this detective or this private eye and you are being hired to follow this character around. Often, you know, most people are only seeing this character in let's say one hour of their day but you're going to be following them for 24 7 around the clock and you're going to follow them to their home, you're going to follow them to the movies, you're going to follow them to see whatever else they're going to do in their lives and by operating as this detective who is following your character around and really trying to get a deep understanding of who this person is, really investigating every aspect of their life, you as a writer are probably going to be met with some interesting insights about this character's true nature and you can work those aspects and that understanding of their personality into the story. Exercise number two is to ask, how were they raised? Our childhoods and our parents have such a massive impact on us, but a lot of adults kind of go through their lives without realizing the true extent of influence that their early life kind of had on them. And it's the same for characters as well. Often, if your characters are, let's say, adults, let's say they're maybe in their 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, you might not be thinking too much about how they actually got this way. But it's very important to wind the clock back and to ask yourself, when this character was a kid, how were they raised? What were they taught as being good? What were they taught to believe was bad? How did these things influence their worldview? This is something I went through with a story coaching client recently. There was a character, sort of like this religious soldier within the story. And I just asked him a bunch of questions, asked the writer behind the character, not the character itself. Um, I asked my client a bunch of questions around, why did he get this way? Why does this character have such a fervent belief in this faith? Why is he so committed to following out this belief? Why does he have this worldview? And it led to unlocking a lot of good realizations around the kind of person that his father probably was and how that influenced him as a character. And then that led to much deeper motivations for that character in the story. Exercise number three is to ask, what is your character's ghost? Your character's ghost is kind of a term for a defining moment of trauma or difficulty in their earlier life, which has motivated them to pursue the things that they are pursuing in the present. The ghost can also be something in the future. A character might really fear, for example, the death of his people. So that ghost, even though it's not something that's actually happened, could be the motivating force behind your character's actions and desires in the story. Essentially, you want to think about the ghost as something that a character is running from. It's motivating them to take change or it's perhaps motivating them to avoid change as well. And the cool thing about your character's ghost is you never have to explicitly state it in a story. It can just be something that you as the author are aware of, but you don't always have to tell the reader what it is. And in fact, sometimes when you keep these details about your character a little bit obfuscated from the reader and you don't really give them a lot of information about who this person is or what their ghost is, what is this thing that is motivating them in their existence, that can actually lead to a lot of intrigue and suspense and it can lead to some very exciting and interesting stories. Now, before I get into the fourth exercise, I should mention that, of course, developing great characters is a really pivotal part of building amazing stories. But if you actually want to be writing full length novels, you also need to make sure that you are having very solid writing habits as well, which is why I'm really happy to be talking about my brand new writing habits course, Easy Writing Habits. If you're looking to build an effortless novel writing habit that allows you to 
consistently and enjoyably finish your first drafts in just two to three months, then you are exactly who I made this course for. Here's what one of my students said. I've noticed a huge improvement in my output. When we started this, I was still on about a thousand words a day. Now I'm averaging 2000 to 2500 and that amount is increasing. Easy Writing Habits contains everything I've learned about building better writing habits. Based off my experience of writing over 1 million words, which has resulted in three fantasy novels and a best-selling video game. The course also comes with a full 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can go through the entire course, and if you don't find it useful, you can just send me an email and I'll give you a full refund. To learn more about the course, go to easywritinghabits.com. The link is also down in the description. Exercise number four is to ask, what does your character most despise about themselves? Quite often, there's a lot of interesting conflict and tension that you can dig into when you find the gap between the idealized image of a character that they have in their head and the reality of who they actually are. And that gap is often broached in an interesting way when you can ask yourself this question of what do they wish they could most change about themselves? What is the thing that they are the least happy about when it comes to their own personality, to their own outlook on their world, to their own place in the world or maybe how people see them, for example. Digging into that territory can reveal some really interesting, fascinating nuances about your character and it can perhaps spark the beginning of an interesting character arc for them to grow and evolve along or some sort of moral progression that they can explore throughout the story. Exercise number five, which is kind of related to the previous question, is to ask what are your character's blind spots? This is something that comes from a concept called the Johari window. The Johari window is basically this four quadrant matrix. In the first quadrant, you have stuff that is known to the self and known to others. In the second quadrant, you have things that are not known to the self, but known to others. In the third quadrant, you have things that are known to the self, but not known to others. And in the last quadrant, you have stuff that is neither known to yourself or known to others. This is really interesting territory to dig into. And in fact, if you want to take this exercise further, you can actually draw out this matrix for one of your characters and just go through each of those quadrants and ask yourself, what are things that this character knows that other people know about them? Also, what are things that this character knows about themselves that other people don't know about them? And then lastly, what are things that no one knows about this character, let alone themselves? That can really provide some interesting territory and some interesting prompts for potential character development and growth. And then lastly, exercise number six, what human need does this character crave the most? So Tony Robbins has this really interesting list of six key human needs. And these are sort of split into three pairs or three binaries. The first being certainty, then variety, significance, love and connection, growth, and contribution. Now Robin's framework is that every human needs, all six of these needs to be satisfied in order for them to kind of be accomplished. But in the context of your story and the context of your characters, I find that it's often quite interesting to ask your character, which one of these six needs do they value the most? And which one do they think is the biggest waste of time? So for example, you might have a character who is this very power hungry dictator egomaniac, and they just care about significance. And they kind of despise the notion of love and connection. Perhaps that sets them up for a really interesting character arc where they go from just seeking significance, rejecting love and connection to other people because they feel like it brings them down to the standard of a lesser. And perhaps they kind of shift from that significance mindset more towards a love and connection mindset over the course of the story. You can see how just looking at these different human needs offers up a lot of different possibilities for character arcs and ways that your character can grow. Because Ultimately, characters are not static entities. You can have characters that don't really change in the story, and in those stories, the focus is more on the plot. But I often find that it's really interesting to have character change, and this is one of the big reasons why readers resonate with stories. They are often the process of seeing someone pursue something that they want, pursue an object of desire, and seeing how the character changes in their pursuit of this thing, in how the obstacles and the difficulties that they face force them to grow and learn and adapt as a character. So those are six character development exercises that have helped me. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other character development exercises which are useful for your writing. And to those of us in pursuit of great stories, to USA, keep writing and keep striving. I'll see you in the next video.